Morning folks. Uh, right, so uh, one for you. I'm going to do an acrylic, like a beginner's guide to acrylic, as simple as I can make it, on MDF. Now, the MDF I'm using is 3mm thick, and it comes, well I buy it in 4 foot by 3 foot sheets. Uh, they're quite big. Uh, and I just cut it, cut them down with a Stanley knife or craft knife uh, against a straight edge. I mark it all out first. But um, this particular MDF, and I'm sure, I'm sure it varies from country to country and manufacturer to manufacturer. But uh, when you're working in, in oils or acrylic, you want something with a bit of bite, a bit of tooth. And I haven't roughed this up in any way. Uh, I've just given it a, a good coat of PVA glue, just one coat of PVA glue, which tends to bring the surface up. And the acrylic, when you put it on, it becomes a sealant in itself. So you don't really, you don't need to, to, to prime, to prime the, uh, the board. Uh, you can put a colour on it, acrylic colour, of course. No good using oils, uh, but, but, but acrylic, all your, your, your tubes, uh, they're, they're, they are all plastic and they give a coat, a, a, a waterproof coat on the surface. So um, that's all you need to know. You can paint on any surface with acrylic. Sometimes you need to prime so that you get something for the acrylic to stick to. But generally I paint on, on MDF and watercolour paper and uh, paper canvas or canvas paper. Uh, and they're all they're all good, uh, and you and you can paint straight onto them. But oil, but oil, well, I love painting in oil. And and uh, but if you're painting with a knife, you might find the, this side a bit difficult to um, negotiate because it's it's raised quite a bit of the surface. But you can give it a rub down with some sandpaper to make it flatter than it is. It's a bit like a lunar surface at the moment. Uh, and the colours, well, I always keep my colours very simple. Uh, you know, people who who put all the colours out and they've got paint boxes, well, it's, it's up to them. Um, so what we've got is uh, cadmium red, ultramarine, Payne's grey, burnt sienna, a yellow, a yellow, that's a light yellow, and some yellow ochre. The black, or the Payne's grey and the white, really don't count as colours. They are a sort of supplementary, well, the, the Payne's grey is supplementary colour, or just something you can add, because it just, it's a cross, it's a shortcut to uh, to greens and so on. Uh, so I'll, I'll try to explain all that. Um, Water to clean your brushes, and I forgot to change my water. Tap over the wrist. Um, brushes, well, any brushes really. I've got uh, a varnish brush that's wearing out. I should have them some others somewhere. I seem to have, they seem to have gone a well, um, but they're very good. They 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 uh, wear out quite quickly, but you end up with a different uh, different texture. I'll look at that then. I've got this uh, three quarter inch uh, or number 12. It, it, it's number 12. It seems meaningless because every manufacturer has got a different no, new, a number code for their brushes. But this is about three quarters of an inch or two centimeters, something like that. Lovely brush. It's Chinese. It's one of the, where Chinese brushes were really good. I've had it for years and it's really good. And I've got uh, brushes to stipple with. And I'm going to to do a sort of a beginner's guide to acrylic painting, as simple as I can. But but acrylic is a very, very versatile colour. Colour? Uh, um, pigment. Uh, uh, it's waterproof when dry. It dries very quickly, which is very good. And you can make it um, more, or more loose by using something like this. This is vet gel, veterinary gel. It's uh, it, it, it's blue but it, it dries, dries perfectly transparent and I've had this for years. Just put a bit in a tray, in a clean tray. I probably won't, I just use water. Um, 
But that that was that probably cost about ten pounds. But the equivalent is supermarket lubricating jelly, KY jelly. They're, but they're more expensive, and they weren't designed to, for the use that some of us, or some of you, might put them to. Uh, but they they are useful. I've I've got some. I've got another one here. I've got sort of those in uh, ladies' hair stuff. That, that works. That's acrylic. But that's again, it's expensive. You want to keep your expenses down when you when you take up painting or change from from say watercolor to acrylic painting. <coughs> but don't don't be stingy with your colors. Uh, right, I've, I'm going to use uh, this uh, this brush. I'm, I, I, I think I've ruined it because I, I left it out and it didn't wash it. Let's see, you've got to wash your colours, wash your brushes, keep them clean, especially acrylic. Because once they dry, thankfully this was washed, but I didn't it, I didn't squeeze it out. So I'm going to do some sort of meadowy type of landscape. I like doing them, but you, I know some of you do like them. Uh, and we've done we've done loads of uh, oil paintings lately with a knife, and I love knife painting. You can use knives for for acrylic painting, but the other side of this this board, this three millimeter board, is it's quite shiny, and you can paint on it. Not in oil, I wouldn't recommend oil, but acrylic, yes, because you're creating a new surface, a, a plastic surface. Well, let's see how we get on. A uh, bit of bit of bit, bit of water. Uh, we we'll go for a nice blue sky, so so just get some paint on. So don't, don't worry about uh, doing one bit and then moving on to the next. Just just colour because at any time you can just paint over this, whether it's dry or not. It doesn't matter. All right, I'm going to put a bit of red in there. Now you can begin to see the surface of this uh, MDF. That's just a bit too uh, mauve. You can mix it with a bit of Payne's grey, a bit of blue. Payne's grey is so useful. So we're using one, two, three, four, five colours. That's all we're going to use for this. And you can, with, with that palette, you can paint just about every landscape. But that's how I paint. So there are very good artists that uh, would always use a lot of colours. It doesn't matter. It's all it's all paint. I'll put some clouds in there. Whoops, I didn't mean that. That's a blue back again. So if you don't work on one spot, just work on all, all, all of it. This board is uh, just under 16 by 12 inches. The 12 inches is pretty right. I've got a frame for it, but uh, the, it's an off cut and uh, it's probably about a quarter of an inch too narrow. So I'm going to have to balance it in the frame. Not for the first time, but just when I come down to a horizon, I'm making this up as I go along. That's the fun of the painting. You can, I'm only showing you one method, I'm not showing you uh, how to do it forever. You, you just, and also, don't worry about copying someone's style. Because in time you will, you will make your own style, you'll discover your own way of tank painting and you'll find out what you like and what you don't like in your own work or someone else's. Alright, ha ha, how then? Let's get a, just a bit more of that blue in there. So 
Hello to a little bit of potential cloud that's kept down to the horizon. Now, Bursiana, do you like my palette? Bursiana is a lovely, lovely sky colour. It mixes, it, it just warms up. It's better than yellow ochre, I reckon, for making nice creamy clouds because clouds are never white. They, they appear white because they are looking white. But if you hold a sheet of white paper up against a cloud, you'll see that it has some colour. And, and this is a very good way to do it. Big billowing cloud. And this is where the fun begins. And you can uh, highlight your clouds with dark. Don't worry about trying to make a finished picture in the first 10 minutes. It's, it doesn't work like that. It's just work over everywhere. All, 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 all. Not at the same time because you can't do that. But, uh, let's have a bit of Payne's Grey now in there. And we'll just get a bit of, bit of dark. And you just work away till you're happy with it. So you've got something that is your own and you like it. Now that's my horizon. I'll put some trees in there. There we go. Get that to a nice sienna. Look at that. That's Get a direction, a flow. Can probably do all of this with one one uh, brush. Now you can use a bit of ochre in the foreground clouds just coming up over the horizon. We'll, we'll put a bit more dark in there. I don't ever get fed up and frustrated with this because it takes years to learn and some are quicker than others. So it's taken me my lifetime doing all this. But I do watercolours, oil and acrylic. I used to do uh, uh, pastels. Only four, just to give away, but uh, they were some one or two were very good. But I got fed up seeing that all the dust from the from the oil pastel end up on the floor. And you can, and I used to do it on um, a very fine uh, paper, but like a very fine carborundum. So it would, it would actually take paint off of the uh, off of the stick. And. Uh, yeah, and then you don't know you're doing it, but uh, you're, you're, you're drawing away or you're sort of getting paint off of the stick and then you start rubbing your fingers off and you don't know. Oh, that's uh, completely painful. get some variety in that sky. Nice bit of that. Take your clouds off of the off of the board. Don't fit it all, all in between two two sides. Give the impression that it's it's uh, never ending. Just fill in the blanks here. Okay, that's not too bad. They all end up differently anyway, whatever you do. Do you know, I think the only people aren't striking in Britain at the moment are us retired people, because we don't want anything else to do. A 
and that's a point there in the brush that really gets into your carved palm of your hand. You file it down a bit. All right, okay, now we're going to put some. Ah, uh, oh, let's have one. Let's try one big cloud. those holes a little bit okay now this is quite a rough surface so maybe I should have sanded it down a bit all right put that in the water let it soak um, right I'm going to use this this brush here now and I'm going to make my greens, because I don't use, well I try not to use greens, I do occasionally, uh, from yellow, red and blue, the three primaries. Uh, you watch. Oh, hey. Okay, there's a lovely green, look at that. Oh, that's just... Put this in. I don't want this to be realistic. I want it to be sort of um, semi-abstract. Or it, I'm not abstract. No, I'm not doing abstract. Um, impressionist. A bit more blue in that. The red. So we've, we've got a bit too much uh, uh, yellow in that, so we want it dark. Just give the shape, go for shapes, don't go for detail or texture as we say in the trade. But I want dark on that horizon. I'm going to put a bit of paint square in there. I, I want to to do the meadow, a grassy meadow. So you need to counter change light against dark. So that's quite good. Just, and I, I use a lot of stipple with this. But don't make your trees like a regiment like all the same size all the way across go for different shapes and sizes try to avoid monotony repetition it's not easy I'm going to put some nice yellows in there going to a bit of white Okay, nice lot of colour, variety, avoid monotony. Uh, I'm down here, so I'll put a slight, slightly blue cast on that. Now we're going uphill a bit. I'm going downhill. I'm going to have a little problem with my neck. The osteopath couldn't do anything after three sessions. Uh, I'm, I'm going for the uh, the health service uh, on that. I'll wait for my doctor to phone me to make an appointment. But I had a couple of uh, couple of um, vertigo falls on, you know, on the deck. Ooh. 
Oh, that's nice and plain there, look at that. But it's just, just too unreal, that. that is. It could be autumn, but... Okay, there we are. It's a nice background. Get some blue, bit of Payne's grey, make a dark here. Right, okay, now that's not really green, but we can add greens to it a lot. And if you remember, try to hold your brush further down the uh, down the handle. Stop you being too fussy. And right, okay. So there we are. Now we're going to the third brush, into the stipple brush. So we want nice colour. So a bit of ochre, a bit of white ochre. I've done this so many times, this type of picture, but for a beginner, if you can come to get somewhere near what this looks like, you'll have done well. You can put ponds in, you can put people in, just indicate them, don't paint portraits of them, unless you're really, really good. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm a rough painter, I'm more impressionist than anything else. Alright, let's just go with that and we'll put some nice green in a bit. Uh, just get uh, some, some high spots, these grasses. Don't worry about wasting paint. Don't be tight with it. Don't be stingy. Oh, just... It merges into the background. You don't want, to, uh, want it distinct. Lost and found, I think that's what we call it. Um, I'm just going to clean the brush and wring it out a bit of a toweling. Now we want, we want bits of shadow. Sort of a neutral colour. This is very easy, but it's very easy to overdo. But we're trying to create a, a meadow, like a Norfolk meadow. Uh, I might even put a put a pond in there. That's easy to do because this dries so quick. Well, it just gets a gentle transition between the mauve and the uh, and the yellow. And then just get some more green in there. This is very reminiscent of uh, yesterday's bike ride. Yes, we did manage to get out first time since before Christmas. It was a lovely day. It's a lovely day now. It's, it's temperature's gone up a bit. Oh, okay, let's just get some green in here. Now, I shall I could I can put a uh, a pond in. We can just put it put the colour of the sky in. 
which is sort of a mauvey blue. Uh, so let's uh, Right, but I put in some put in some lights, a reflection of that, so there's a bit of sienna in there. Mm. We'll, we'll put a border in there, so we'll put a bush in here don't make them the size the same but uh, but we want, what we want is a, a sort of darker if you look at stems these marsh grass stems and we do quite often you know, the bull walk through the wetlands in Morden Hall Park which is very beautiful if you, look, if you live near it and you haven't been there just go it's, it's amazing uh, They've spent quite a lot of money on, on pedestrian cycle paths, which is very good. Um, but now, they're sort of... Hmm... Uh, they're sort of ochre colour, bit of sienna, bit of, bit of that. Right, let's get a bit more colour in there. Alright, then we've got a, got a sort of problem there. No reflections of these trees at the back. I'm going to lighten up put some pieces in there, uh, but I want to get um, some nice uh, colour in. Just some texture in the bottom here, just uh, well, that's a, that's how to do this texturing detail with a, a worn out brush. So don't throw it away, don't throw them away when they're not working for the fine stuff, it's just this is what you can use them for. Let's get some of this in here.
Right. Uh, let's see if we can just get a bit of nice greeny or I'm going to get a left away. a bit of light. <coughs> right, now we just accentuate some of those, uh, that pond. So I'm going to use a little bit of that sienna, but a little white. A lot of fish in this pond. They got there and they're doing storm. Uh, now we've got some of this, these heads, seed heads. Okay, I'm going to leave that there. I'll put it in the frame for you and uh, we'll see what it's like. Now remember, this, is, this isn't a masterpiece, this is a demonstration. I'll clean all that up and I'll probably all watercolour tomorrow. Oh no, no painting tomorrow. Ah. A bit of paper and just clean up all bits look I've got K red on there. Right now we just trim that off. Now that was uh, Brian S who taught me how to do that or showed me how to do it and I've been doing it ever since. I never thought of it myself, it's pretty obvious isn't it? Uh, I like, oh I know what I could do. I could uh, put a bird in it or two. Let's get a rig on. That's almost dry there. Yeah, it's dry. Okay, now I won't put any people in it. But in the reality of this actual picture, there's some quite, quite some wintry trees in here, uh, but I don't feel like winter. It's a lovely day today. It's beautiful and uh, sunny, cold, or well, fairly cold. Right, I'm gonna put that in the mount, so don't go away. I'm still here. Just about, just about hold in the horizontal. Couple of pins. Okay, would you like that on your wall? I've just seen is this uh, bright spot here so I'm going to replicate that in that pond 
Right, it's got a bit of, bit of white, a bit of, bit of sienna. It's already pure white. Okay, so that reflects that, okay. So there we are, so just a demo for you, look, it's grinning at the top there. But for display purposes only. Uh, now you can see how how easy that was. Let's just see if I can push up a bit. Okay, okay. Uh, Right, well I thoroughly enjoyed doing that. I, I hope you, you do. I hope you got something from it. Uh, there we go. So you you can put church spires in, uh, but it, uh, I think probably we will put some figures in because um, Just say it's some uh... oh, let's go get a red. Put a hat on there. As easy as it looks. Right, a bit of a uh, paint grey for this. Some more white. Got plenty out. Well, they're very easy to do figures, uh, but you might have to sort of go over them a bit. Uh, with these, are, I think I'd pr prefer blue on there with a white hat. Yeah, that do. They're just, they're just there. They're just, it, uh, just make their appearance. Um, oh, I think it's all that's good. So anyway, I'll get that uploaded for you, folks. I hope you like it. Thanks for watching. Any questions, you can ask me on Miss Messenger, Facebook, or all that on Facebook. I, I don't often look at my other pages other than my art page where I, I post all this stuff. Uh, and links to videos and so on <coughs> but uh, you can uh, get me on messenger or on youtube thanks for watching happy painting bye bye